Thomas Arendt, thank you for becoming a patron. You are what keeps the dream alive. All right, let's get into it. You know... I think that this is like... What the fuck? What the fuck? The first time... I can't find him. I've had fun with Ready or Not in a long time. 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 For those of you that don't know what Ready or Not is, Ready or Not is a realistic tactical first person shooter set against the backdrop of political and economic instability in the United States. You are placed in the boots of a character codenamed Judge, an elite SWAT commander being tasked with defusing tense, hostile situations in a morally bankrupt city. This is a game that is striving to be a spiritual successor to the SWAT series, mostly SWAT 4 and somewhat SWAT 3. Now, I have been a channel that has been covering this game for a very long time, and I'm not gonna lie to you, this studio has had a very rocky start. What's up everybody, Do right back at it again with another video. Today we're gonna be talking about Ready or Not because they finally lifted the NDA, so now we can talk about the co-op single player. And not only that, they ended up dropping an update along with lifting the NDA. And I should probably make this clear, no, this is not beta. They are just lifting the NDA for the alpha and only giving supporters an update. And no, they did not price drop the supporter edition. It is still $120, so I just wanted to make that clear. I'm not entirely sure when beta is supposed to be. I heard rumors of maybe June, July, but I don't think anybody actually knows for sure. This is like the first update that they've given us since freaking February of 2019, I think it was, or 2020. It's been so long since we had a freaking update that I really don't even remember. And it's only for single player and co-op, while multiplayer just kind of like sits there. I mean, honestly, I, I could care less about the multiplayer, but there are a lot of people out there that actually do care about the multiplayer. So they're kind of just like sitting there on the chopping block like, oh, wow, well, okay. Actually, I was asking around and I didn't see a way to actually access the multiplayer so I don't even think we have multiplayer but anyways so we're gonna get into it but before we do that be sure to like up the video so that more people can see it because apparently it does actually affect the video subscribe if you're new and ding that bell so that you can get more content on running or not news and updates or any game just like it all right let's get into it so before the update happened there actually was a newsletter that was dropped by Ryro of all people man I haven't seen that guy in ages how's he doing we're gonna get into what that newsletter actually says right now so let me just read it off to you because it's relatively short about time huh I feel like I've seen him say that like three or four times. Hello, Ready or Not supporters. We are happy to announce that our supporters will be getting a co-op content update today. This alpha update will include five playable co-op or single player levels. We aim to bring players a challenging AI experience within Los Suenos, meaning the dreams in Spanish. Yes, for those of you that don't know, it's always been said that Ready or Not is going to take place in California, but now it looks like we actually have an area or a name at least, because when I type in Los Suenos, it points to two locations on the map just outside of Los Angeles, either Ave de los Suenos, which means Bird of Dreams, or Predo de los Suenos, which means Meadow of Dreams. This probably has to do with Carcosa, but I just don't have the mind to get into it, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, there is a video that basically explains it at the top right and the eye icon. Just watch that video and you'll get what we're talking about. But anyways, let's continue. You will spawn in HQ. HQ is basically like a little hub for us to spawn in and screw around in, basically. Upon approaching the assignment desk, you will be prompted to choose a mission. Once selected, all players must head to the red carpet and the mission countdown will begin. There are approximately eight maps. We've got 213 Park Homes, 4U Gas Station, Wenderley Hills Hotel, Caesars Car Dealership, Port Hoken, Teresa Farm, and the other two are blockout maps, which for those of you that don't know what blockout maps are, they are just untextured maps that are supposed to be for testing, but honestly, these maps don't feel like they're for testing. They just honestly feel like another level of the hotel map that's just been cut off. Did I mention that the hotel hotel map was freaking huge it's so big that we don't actually have the full version of it like it's just been cut off well anyways each mode has game modes attached to them but not every game mode is available for each map there are five game modes barricaded suspects which is apparently normal this mode is essentially like regular swap 4 where you're just walking in and trying to arrest everyone without killing anyone that's like the basic thing with barricaded suspects raid is a little harder these suspects are more likely to actually shoot at you so obviously you can actually shoot back at them and kill them but you'll still lose points every death 
definitely loses points. There's active shooter, which is another hard mission. The active shooter will actually shoot at civilians that are already like, you know, down. He'll shoot at everybody. Like he doesn't care. Another game mode is bomb threat, which is very hard. There are multiple bombs that are planted throughout any level and you have to basically disarm them while also trying to arrest civilians and suspects without getting killed. And apparently their hardest one here is hostage rescue. You have to basically rescue the hostages as fast as you can because if not then the guy will shoot them and this mission is apparently insane they're all pretty fun not gonna lie most of the missions have their own sub objectives like say on the meth map you have to actually pick up meth and secure it as evidence so that's pretty neat kind of got off track here but uh, i felt like i really needed to explain what was actually on this desk this is definitely an interesting way to do a menu for sure and yeah the hq i actually quite like my only issue with it is that random people can just like hop into your game which i mean i don't necessarily hate but i would at least like to you know have like a little thing that tells me you know who's in here and also have like a kick or bam button because you know there are people that could probably screw with your game and you know i just don't want to have to deal with that but anyways if you want to change your loadout or that of your team if you're using ai companions just head over to the quartermaster station on the first floor there's actually multiple places for you to change out your gear whether you're at the shooting range the kill house the menu table you can actually edit your ai guys in the uh, locker room i think that's a locker room i think that this is pretty cool but i kind of wish that it wasn't like a separate thing you know because like i have to go to the locker and then if i want to change the way that my character looks i have to like get out and then walk over to the mirror and then change that and then if i want to freaking change out the attachments that are on my weapon i have to go to the bench that's over there i feel like that's a bit tedious what i would like is that i should be able to like walk up to any station still but if i wanted to like switch to a different station there should be a button to like switch to a station you know like the bottom left right there like switch appearance you click on that the camera swivels over to the mirror and you can see your guy like standing there just to see what character you want to be or what skin you want to have and then if i want to switch my weapon there should also be another button to switch your weapons and the camera should like swivel over to the attachment table and whatever one that you swivel to and you like exit like that's where your guy should like pop out of you know that'd be kind of cool instead of me having to like walk over there and then like do this and that it's a little tedious but i, I kind of hope that they fix it the way that i just described it because that would be great but anyways once you've selected your loadout you can test in the shoot house or the firing range this is actually pretty neat although i feel like there's actually not a lot of targets in here they could definitely add more i actually quite like this like hq but one thing that i've noticed is that they said that we were gonna have like a hub but in like the previews that they showed it looked a lot bigger with like big glass windows on the side i don't know if they just decided to like change that or maybe if i'm just thinking of like another map but i mean the hq is pretty cool but seems like kind of a downgrade i could be wrong about that i just kind of wish that i could actually see who's in my game and just have like a ban and kick button just in case you know people are just being bad faith actors you know like at the moment you're able to just either go single player friends only or a public match basically anybody can join then i could kick like the randoms but the interesting thing about the hub is that it's surprisingly dark and kind of gloomy my subscribers have said that it's kind of like the calm before the storm you know type of deal i could definitely feel that vibe i mean i would imagine there to be like a lot of like people like filing paperwork but they're kind of just like sitting around and standing there i mean i get that this is an alpha they're still like working on this stuff but it's just like it feels really gloomy like what's up with the candles it's obvious that this place has freaking lights it's just there's not like lights in like specific parts of the area why is it so dark but i mean i'm just nitpicking at this point it's not a big deal to me the only thing that i would really like is just that system where i can kick people or ban people not saying that i've had any trouble with needing to actually kick anyone just yet but i feel like it's gonna happen sometime i've actually enjoyed just leaving it open so far for people to join so i hope they don't ruin it but anyways we really value your feedback and bug reporting so please use the in-game tools to let us know when you encounter issues press escape and click report bug and be as detailed as possible that people have been reporting bugs in game and also on the discord pretty frequently and the devs have actually been fixing it pretty well so far as far as i can tell or at least writing down that they know about a bunch of issues they actually know about more issues than i've actually seen in the past couple of days they've actually been updating the game itself i've actually seen patches coming out to fix that current build but anyways building a game as ambitious as ready or not with the desire to provide a more realistic experience has been incredibly challenging most recently we had to take major steps back to ensure fundamental structures were going to work well and provide a fun gameplay experience yeah um they removed a lot of features and we're gonna get into that later in the video but let's continue in trying to find this balance we have created an experience that encompasses all of the lessons we have learned over the past year and here's the big thing right here nda is lifted on our alpha meaning you can freely discuss the contents of the upcoming alpha update and share clips of the gameplay as you see fit we accept criticism but invite you to be as professional as possible understanding that your words carry weight and that there are real human beings working hard on this challenging game join us for our 
next Q&A session. On Discord, for those that might be interested in chatting with the dev team, our first will be scheduled on December 7th. Warm regards, Void Interactive. I actually did take part in that Q&A. It was about three hours long, and they actually did talk about quite a bit of stuff. If you would like me to make a video on that, then you should probably give me like, I don't know, 100 likes? Give me 100 likes and uh, I'll make a video about it. And that's pretty much it for the little newsletter that they dropped. You know, it's funny because the day that I went live, like an hour after it dropped, I actually put in the title, I'm breaking NDA and there's nothing they can do about it. So many people fell for that shit. That shit was funny. So finally, after a whole nine minutes, we're going to talk about how I thought about it. Guys, I gotta tell you, this update was a pleasant surprise. After three long years, I feel like this is the first time that Red or Not has actually felt even close to a swap for successor. I honestly had quite a bit of fun with this update. Like, I genuinely enjoyed it. It's honestly a stark contrast from the previous update because before they would just only give us like multiplayer, not so much single player co op stuff. Like, they did give us it, but it was like really old and very unfinished. Like, multiplayer, I guess, was more polished, but I didn't come here for multiplayer. I came here to play single player co op. And with this update, that's exactly what we got. Granted, it is pretty freaking late, but I'm glad that it's finally here after all this time. The gunplay feels like a bit of a downgrade, but honestly, it just fits. Like, I would say that the multiplayer's gunplay is actually better than this, but this gunplay, not too bad. Like, it's not terrible. It just fits, you know? Like, it's right for the single player co op. The atmosphere that I get with this game is like dark and gritty. Like, you're not sure what's going to happen. And that's honestly how this game should have been from the beginning. But only now are we actually experiencing something like this. You know, what's interesting is that I don't think there's actually a single day map. Like, everything is always at night. I think it definitely helps with the atmosphere, but I kind of wish that there was also day maps too. It would just give players more options. Options. And it kind of gives developers a bit of a cheat, you know? It feels like a different map when it's a day map, you know? Out of all the maps that I've played, the only one that I kind of disliked was probably the gas station, but I don't think it was like a terrible map. It's just that it felt very big and very empty. Like, I feel like the map might be better once they actually add more things to it, but honestly, I just like the previous version of gas station, in my opinion. Like, this one, I don't know. It's like a half gas station, half diner, and I just don't like the way that it looks, in my opinion. I like the previous gas station better, but I guess we'll see once they actually add more stuff to it out of all the unfinished maps the most unfinished map that felt the most unfinished was probably hotel because they only give us like a piece of it and cut off the rest like the whole lobby area that's just like gone and missing there's also supposed to be a garage but it's just not in the game either like the only part that we're actually exploring is just like the bedroom area while the rest of it is kind of just like blocked off or not even there hotel is supposed to be like a gigantic map i think it's supposed to be like the hardest map in uh ready or not if i'm not mistaken but we'll probably get it when beta rolls around i suppose the meth map was initially going to be like a much smaller map than it actually is now like they ended up adding in like another place for you to actually go into in like an underground area i think they even extended the house pretty cool map the car dealership was a pretty big dealership i remember like it used to be like a whole block long you could even like look into like the displays and stuff and it looks like you still can definitely one of the more interesting ones and we have port hoken which is the port map that we used to talk about how uh there was like sex trafficking stuff in there and yeah they actually have that in there uh but obviously i'm not allowed to show that off on youtube because youtube will probably demonetize me and your boy works too hard to get demonetized but if you would like me to show off that stuff then you need to like click on that join button that's down there or become a patron because i ain't fucking doing that unless i actually have a decent income the one big surprise for me was actually uh Teresa farm that one was like probably the only one that wasn't actually given to us like that's honestly a surprise map that we didn't know was going on i mean i knew about farm but i didn't know anything about it like what it was supposed to be basically what it is is like a, a vine farm i believe because there's a bunch of like big barrels where they keep all the wine in the map and it's it seems like that's kind of like the hideout for the paramilitary force at least they're wearing like the uniforms that they were wearing in the multiplayer but you also have to remember that the paramilitary guys have been revamped in the multiplayer they actually showed off a picture of the newer version of the character models but i don't have it with me right now at the moment but it's an overall pretty cool map i actually do like the way that every map plays they're like very close quarters and you have to like really check your corners because if not that could be literal life and death when it comes to the level design they are really good they honestly all feel realistic to me like people have actually lived in this type of level you know and there is like cover everywhere but it's in a way that makes sense you know like you don't have like a table in the middle of a room just to have a table in the middle of the room like there's a reason why it's like that they definitely put a lot of thought into these levels although i will admit that there are some levels that do feel like a bit of a maze i can't get lost in them sometimes but i generally end up finding my way over to where i need to be usually kind of like a trial and error sort of deal i don't think there's any map that i like really hated they're all pretty freaking good and for an indie game it actually looks pretty good i wouldn't say that they're like metro x it is type of graphics but you know they're, they're pretty good for an indie game the game is pretty well optimized like i don't think i actually ran into like a big lag issue or anything like that actually correction when i put on night vision goggles it tanked my fps 
just like, holy cow, what the hell? But aside from that, it was pretty good. It honestly comes as a bit of a shock considering previous updates where every update was either like a miss or a freaking mishmash of a bunch of problems. This one was actually pretty good. I hardly ran into issues. It was even well optimized when I had four other people in my game. The only thing that really hindered them was the player's ping. But aside from that, it was actually pretty good. When it comes to bugs, I would say that there wasn't that many that I noticed, but there definitely were a couple of annoying ones. Nothing game breaking, but just a couple that I'll name off here. AI being able to shoot me through walls. That happened maybe like four or five times. I've seen quite a bit of clipping issues, especially on characters. Not so much on uh, the map itself, but there were a lot of missing textures on the map because a lot of the maps are just usually unfinished because it still is an alpha. Toggle crouch and aiming didn't seem to work. That was kind of annoying. Another thing is when we spawned, we'd immediately get shot at by AIs that we couldn't see. It would literally kill like half the team before we even got into the match, really. Voice chat can be a little shoddy at times. We had to switch to Discord a little bit. The NVGs would tank my gameplay. The flashlight from players' guns would stay in one spot sometimes. But for the most part, these bugs really didn't hinder my experience. It's just what you get when you get yourself into an alpha, honestly. But the developers have been writing down a bunch of other bugs that other people have encountered. And for the most part, they keep dropping patches to fix a majority of these issues right off the bat. So some of the bugs that I just named off to you might already be fixed or dealt with. But these are just the ones that I experienced. So yeah, for an alpha, it plays pretty well so far. I really like how this game gives you multiple options on how to go about the maps. You can come in from the front or going from the back. In most maps, you can choose to go in quietly by picking the door or loud by using C2 charges, breaching shotguns, door rams, or simply just kicking in the door. Be careful with those C2 charges because they can be deadly. I'd step away from that when you put it on the door, just saying. Some doors might need more than one ram or kick to get it open, but there are some doors that you simply won't be able to open by using the kick or ram. Also, if you kick a door three times and the door doesn't open, you will actually break your leg. You know, I think it's really funny because I actually asked for that feature. I'm like, what if you like kick your door three times and all of a sudden you just break your leg? That would be a funny mechanic and it actually does happen in the game. Oh fuck, I broke my legs. That's hilarious. So you either have to lock pick it or find another way around. But be careful of your surroundings because there are door traps. Honestly, it's best to just use the mirror gun on every door because it allows you to look underneath the doors to check to see what's on the other side and to see if there's also door traps on the door that you're looking under before you decide to do any of those things that I just said before. But again, not every door will allow you to use your mirror gun. So you might have to just peek it to make sure that there's no traps. If there is a door trap, then the best thing to do is to lock pick the door, then peek it to disarm the trap. Once you disarm it, then you can do whatever you want with that door. It's really crazy to me how such a simple thing could have so many options. Hell, the door mechanics are like worth $10 alone. Okay, so let's talk a bit about the AI. There's suspect AI, civilian AI, and the police AI. And out of all the three, I would say that the suspect AI is probably the best. They definitely do react to the player like if they hear a noise. If they hear that you're on the other side of the door, they might do one of two things. Either stand on the other side to like keep you from actually coming in if you're trying to like just open up the door, or they might actually just shoot through it. I'm not entirely sure if that's actually intentional though because sometimes the AI would just shoot through walls and just hit me and when I tried to shoot through the doors because I knew they were on the other side my gun would simply not shoot through the door like I shot exactly where I thought he was standing and either it didn't kill him or maybe the bullets just didn't go through the door I can't really tell but their bullets went through the door and hit me and I died so maybe I'm just giving them a bit too much credit but I'm not entirely sure the AI likes to get behind cover they literally hide in corners so check your corners if you're not careful they can run they can ambush you they do fake surrender like there was one that actually got on his knees and i thought he was actually done but he reached behind him so fast and he drew on me they're pretty nuts if you don't cover a guy that's given up he will get up and try to run for a gun or possibly leave the area depending on where he is would i say that they're op um not really they don't feel like they're op like they'll insta tab me if they see me you know but there for sure is definitely a learning curve the suspect ai i would say is pretty good but they do sometimes shoot the walls the civilian ai i would say is probably kind of like in the middle they're not terrible they're just kind of like standing there most of the time like whenever there's something going off You'll see them like ducking down and trying not to get shot If you actually look at a civilian you can actually see him like pointing his finger towards where he thinks the bad guy is Not all civilians will be compliant. You might have to actually persuade them by simply hitting them I don't think the pepper spray actually works at the moment or at least not fully because I haven't seen people be too Successful with it, but overall they're not too bad like the AI maybe when they're like running away It's like really hard to like, you know
know, keep them from going somewhere because you can't run that fast. Well, you can't run at all, nothing but it. The worst AI, I would say, is the police officers. I mean, they're not terrible, but there are some, like, kinks that they need to work out. Like, sometimes they'll get stuck on doors or when I order them to, like, check to see if there's a trap and they're like, no, there's no trap, but then they open up the door and freaking just die. If I have them follow me, I'll turn around and sometimes they're just not there where I need them to be. There are times when they don't actually follow orders. When they work, they're pretty good, but there are some kinks that they definitely need to work out. Like, honestly, you're just better off doing the mission by yourself or playing with friends because AI squad mates at the moment are still under construction. But the cool thing about the AI civilians and suspects is that they do spawn in randomized locations, so they're definitely not in the same spot every time that you go into the same map. It was another thing that SWAT 4 did pretty well. Glad to see it's here. When it comes to the sound, I would say that this game is actually pretty good on its sound. The ambience is pretty good. It honestly sounds like I'm there. The music that's in this game really reminds me of SWAT 4, just the way that you're like walking around and you get that like very subtle beat and then all of a sudden you get shot at and you get that I can't find it. Like the music like really starts up and then goes quiet after the gun battles. That's how SWAT 4 was. Like it really does feel like I'm playing like a more updated version of SWAT 4. I know not a lot of people like the music that's in the game, but it gives me nostalgia. But my only issue with it really is just that it feels a little repetitive because I keep hearing the same song over and over on different maps. I mean, to be fair, the composer is still making songs for the game and he recently just added like two or three, so it'll be a bit before we get more. When it comes to customization, there are exactly six assault rifles, the tax 700 which is basically a paintball gun i don't know why they count that as an assault rifle but anyways the sa58 the m4a1 the sbr 300 the sr16 hk416 which i believe is the new weapon that was added to this update three submachine guns you got the mp5a2 the ump45 the mpx three shotguns we got the new less than lethal shotgun it's actually a beanbag shotgun i believe this is exclusive to supporters i'm not entirely sure then we got the m4 super 90 pretty nice shotgun the 870 cq B. And then for pistols, we got the G19, M4A1, the 357 Magnum, M9A1, Taser, 57 USG, USP45, and that's it for secondary weapons. And then we have some tactical stuff, the mirror gun, breaching shotgun, ballistic shield, the regular one for police only, and the rescue shield, which I believe is only for the NDA supporters, and the battering ram. For gear, we got no armor, light armor, and heavy armor. Depending on which one you pick, it actually does affect how fast you run, although I hardly saw much of a difference it's just like a smidge better when it comes to moving around if you take off all your armor we actually tested it i wasn't wearing any armor against a guy who was actually wearing armor and we basically walked the sand we did like a little race there really wasn't much of a difference when it comes to headwear we've got obviously no face wear nvgs these things were freaking taking my gameplay when i tried using them the cbrn riot gas mask anti-flash goggles and ballistics face masks for grenades we got flashbang cs gas and stinger grenades for the tactical devices we've got c2 explosives door wedges and pepper spray for personal appearance you can pick from multiple characters you got judge who is the head honcho who's the commander-in-chief king swan prescott eli alabama and then alpha and bravo which are people that have yet to be named it seems i feel like we're missing a couple of operators here like i remember a guy named paz being in here he's actually in the gameplay but his new name is swan i suppose not entirely sure with that one and for the uniforms you've obviously got the swat and the hrt not too much of a selection there but hopefully we get more in the future there are multiple attachments that you can put on top of guns i won't go through all of these but for every gun you're able to pretty much put a flashlight on all of them and a laser on all of them and most of them are just mainly close quarters optics not a wide variety but i think it's just enough just to get the job done the last thing that i want to talk about is the scoring system that is now in the game it really makes the game tough and i'll probably never get an s grade because the only way that you'll ever get an s is if you actually just go in with freaking less than lethal weapons which is probably something that i'm gonna do but for the most part i'm just gonna go in with regular weapons and try not to kill anybody like that's supposed to be like the defining thing right there like you want to have cool weapons but you're trying not to actually shoot people unless they actually draw on you that's where the fun is to me bringing less and lethal weapons feels like easy mode but it's honestly the best way to get an s grade i'm most likely going to be in the a and b range for most of my time but the best way to lose points is by getting civilians killed or tripping over a door trap or losing a bunch of swat officers that'll get you down to the e's and the f's the only thing that i kind of hate about the scoring system is if a suspect kills a civilian and i'm like nowhere near it like i just like start up and i hear gunshots and 
and I already hear civilians dying and I get subtracted points in the active shooter mode. It's like, how am I supposed to stop him? There's no way I could have freaking reached that guy. Like, I feel like I shouldn't be subtracted points if I'm not inside the level already. But that's just me. But overall, I do like the scoring system. And uh, yeah, so that pretty much covers ready or not. Overall, I definitely had a lot of fun with this update and I'm going to continue to keep, you know, posting more content for it. But obviously I need to get to other games because I feel like newer developers are kind of like nagging me to try their game out, which is kind of funny. But this is probably going to be my main game for quite a bit. Definitely had a lot of fun. Uh, would I recommend that you actually get this game right now? Hell no. Listen, this update was pretty good, but I still don't think that an unfinished alpha is worth the price of two polished games. Also, I'm not sure that I can trust these developers because they've shown so many times in the past that they'll give us like a big update and then like won't tell us what's going on, keep us in the dark for long periods of time before we actually get a newer update. Like that's the thing that I fear about this. Like this is actually a pretty decent sized update. It'll keep us busy for a while, but how long is that while going to be before we actually get another update? Playable update, not just a newsletter. Like I'm not even asking for like a big update. Like just give me like a new gun or a new mechanic to try out, you know? Like it doesn't have to be like a big update. Just one that keeps us happy, you know? This is why I'm kind of just, you know, recommending people just to wait for beta because 120 just feels like it's not worth it because I've experienced what it's like to buy into this game early and be left in the dark for long periods of time. But I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter what I think because people are just buying into it anyway. It's funny because I actually said the same thing about the alpha being the price of two polished games and yeah, they're like, well, I paid a thousand dollars for Star Citizen. Oh my god, I'm surrounded by idiots. I'm one of them too, because I bought into this game. <laughs> well, if people can buy freaking NFTs for like a billion dollars, then, well, there's no hope. Speaking of newsletters, Guinevere is back! What a turn of events. She actually got on the horn and said, Howdy everybody, I wanted to take the time to let you all know that my leave of absence is over, and I am back working as the community manager for Void Interactive. In the following weeks, I will be rolling out communications through our social media channels and in the Discord servers. As for the current information, we are working as hard as we can to secure more Steam keys in order to once again allow orders of the supporter edition of ready or not leave of absence i don't believe that for a second <laughs> I specifically remember her saying former, not leave of absence, but you know, it's whatever. Glad to see her back, and uh, yeah. Okay, so now we're gonna get into something that kind of sucks about all of this, and it's just like the amount of features that are missing to make all of this possible. So let's go ahead and hop into it. So obviously the first thing is that there is no multiplayer anymore. Honestly, I could give a shit about multiplayer, but there were a lot of people that actually did play it and gave a lot of feedback to the multiplayer that was going on. With this update, all those people that were giving feedback are basically just sidelined in favor of the co-op single player. I mean, technically there is PvP, but it's pretty minuscule compared to the previous update. But pretty much all you gotta do is just go into the kill house, have, you know, two teams go from one side and the other side and just meet up in the middle and just shoot each other. It's definitely not the same as the previous iteration. There are a number of weapons that have been torn out or just gone or missing. We've got the 2011, P99, 1911, P20, SCAR L, SCAR H, BRN 180, AR18, M590, MPL, M7, 76, Saiga 12, AK, M16, M14, Grenade Launcher, and much, much more. They're still in the files according to Loot SCP, but apparently they have a bunch of issues with them. It's interesting to me because those were a bunch of guns that were already in the game beforehand. We were actually using them in the previous update. I would definitely like to see all these weapons come back, but I guess we'll see. With the new character models, you can no longer see what you actually equip. So before, when you picked a uh, specific type of you know, a grenade like a stinger or a flashbang, it would actually show on the back of your character. Now with these new models, it does not do that. But to be fair to the developers, maybe this is just the start of the character models. Hopefully, we'll be able to, you know, see in a later update, we'll actually be able to see what a player equips because the grenade will be attached to their backside. We'll be like, yo, you got a stinger. I can see you got a stinger right there. Toss it in the door. Speaking of grenades, before we used to be able to choose more than just one type of throwable and tactical device. Now we can only use one throwable and one tactical device. Before we were able to basically carry everything, before I used to be able to hold maybe like three stingers, three CS gases, three flashbangs, but now I can only pick one. And with tactical devices, it's the same thing. I used to be able to hold C2 explosives, door wedges, and a pepper spray, but now I can only pick one. And that kind of sucks because when it comes to tactical devices, most likely I'm only ever going to use the freaking C2 explosive. Like, I just don't see door wedges being all that useful to me. 
Once I decide to like go solo and deck on my team with specific things, it's a bit of a compromise, I guess. But it's kind of sad that I just don't have like everything on me that I would like to use in game. I also just realized that one of the grenades that I used a lot was the nine bang in the multiplayer. Like that's just like gone. I don't even see it in here. So yeah, there is no more running. That's right. Sprinting is gone. Honestly, I think that this is actually a good change because it definitely changes the pace of the game in a good way. It makes it feel closer to swap four than it honestly ever did before. But my biggest problem with it is that the maps are like really big. Not saying that I don't like their size, just saying that it takes forever to get around the map when you're just walking everywhere. And I'm someone who likes to be thorough when I play this type of game because I'm out here cuffing hostages and suspects, tagging them, making sure that I pick up a majority of the evidence. Most of the time I'm looking for dead officers because my teammates die a lot. I have to find the weapons that those officers drop along with the suspects. So I tend to go back and forth between those areas to see if I've missed anything. Like at the very least, I think that they should allow us to just jog to make things go just a little faster because walking around a big map can take forever. Also, there was a subscriber that pointed this out to me. I've had suspects run away from me and I can't even sprint after them. Like, dude, I can't go after them. Like, I'm fucking low. I've actually had this happen to me. Down on your knees. Hands up now. Drop your knees. They didn't come hands back up, here. Above your head. Get down. I want to see. Hands up now. Drop your knees. Well, I guess if they get away, they get away, right? So wait, we are no longer able to run, but civilians still can? Like, they can literally outrun me and just leave the map. I better not be docked points for a civilian that I can't freaking catch. I think I'm actually glad that the sprinting is gone, but I could at least, you know, see a jog. I actually just found out that you can actually move just a little faster if you go into your low ready stance by pressing home. Your guy actually does, like, walk a little bit faster. I don't know if it'll be enough to get around big maps or catch a civilian or suspect. I mean, I guess it's better than nothing. Thing. So that was that. There is no more canting, which is essentially when you put a scope on your rifle and a rail to have another optic off to the side there so you can just like flip your weapon back and forth. Crown Branch features this better than any game that I've seen. Well, I guess Escape from Tarkov too. And World War 3 now I think about it. So that's gone. A lot of PIP scopes are gone. And seeing as how canting isn't in the game, I highly doubt that those are actually going to come back. But who knows? There's no more zoom. So when you were playing in the previous build, you right click to aim and then you hold shift to like zoom in and the camera would zoom in just a little bit so you could get a better shot with your uh, optic or iron sight. That's gone. There's no more incremental movement speed control, which is something that I believe is only featured in uh, Escape from Tarkov now. Before it was in Ready or Not, where you'd basically scroll down on the mouse so you could like start, you know, creeping. It was honestly the best way to not make any noise. I mean, I guess it gets replaced by um, a slow movement when you press the shift key, but it's just not the same. Along with that removement, we also lose laser point shooting. That was something that was featured in the previous previous update but now here it's just gone in the previous update my only issue with it is that it was attached to the incremental slow thing i would have liked if it was like separated from that but they just completely tore out both features i don't know why but they dimmed down the flashlight and they just made it look a lot tinier like i really liked it in the previous update because i could actually see i'm not sure why they like doing that they have now made the healing system very minimalistic like before you were able to actually take out a pack and actually heal yourself and there's like a cool little animation where he does like uh, multiple things, gets on his knees and he hits himself with a freaking needle or tries to, you know, straighten his leg back into place. Like now it's kind of replaced with like a Far Cry sort of system. When your health gets really low, he like fixes himself. You can't just like do that when you want to. It's only when you're like really hurt. Kind of sucks because before you were basically able to fully heal yourself. They cut the player count down from like eight or 10 to five now. And I'm not entirely sure if that's going to be for the foreseeable future, but I guess it makes sense considering the size of the maps. Now to be be fair i don't know if they're just cutting it for every mode or if it's just only for the co-op single player like maybe all these features are still in the multiplayer but we're not entirely sure before this update the game was really taking like an escape from tarkov type of approach when it comes to you know gameplay but it seems like they're just taking out all these features to accommodate for console like that's what it feels like but i don't know i could be wrong so those were the features that i can name off the top of my head but i'm sure there's a lot more that i really don't remember now to be clear none of these missing features have really hindered my experience like i still had a lot of fun but i'm just a little sad to see that they're gone you know to be fair to these developers it is just an alpha an overpriced alpha but a lot of things can happen between now and you know release whatever that'll be so i hope that we'll get to see a lot of these features and weapons and mechanics come back to the game one day but until then thank you all for watching if you made it this far put in the chat sir you're in my way because you're a real one okay i'm gonna end it here if you enjoyed the fact that i cover games like ready or nothing be sure to like the video share the video and comment down below if you're someone that would like to support the channel check out my patreon 
or get on that join button that's underneath the video. If you're someone that's new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and ding that bell so that you can get more content on Ready or Not or any games that I decide to cover. With that all being said, I want to thank everybody for coming out to watch and I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.